الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد And بإذن الله تعالى we are going to proceed with the dars today inshallah being the first dars in refutation of the doubts of the khawarij and the people of takfir the book bi'idhnillahi ta'ala that we are going to go through is a small risala which is titled wajadilhum billati hiya ahsan argue with them in ways which are better it is a munaqasha ilmiya hadi'a it is a uh, academic refutation on the most famous doubts of the of the khawarij and the people of takfir uh, written by a sheikh bandar ibn nayef al utaybi bi uh, idhnillahi ta'ala we are going to go through the muqaddima the introduction to it in which the sheikh hafizahullah ta'ala he mentions that as we all know in our times we live in times where there is a lot of shubahat shubahat from the people of bid'ah and misguidance so therefore it is incumbent upon ahl sunnah wal jama'ah to learn the usul of ahl sunnah and to refute the people of bid'ah and misguidance the shaykh hafizahullah ta'ala he says that he wanted to write this book in order to answer those doubts because of the uh, danger of these doubts surrounding uh, or being uh, spread amongst the Muslim Ummah today. The Sheikh, he says that the nata'ij, the outcome of these doubts, lead to many things. But he listed four of them. The four main doubts or the four results of these doubts, the Sheikh, he says, taratan yuradu biha isqat bay'atu lil amr. That sometimes... Why do the people of Takfir and the Khawarij, why do they spread these doubts? Number one, they want to see the downfall of the Wali Al-Amr. Or they want to see the downfall of obedience and pledging allegiance to the Wali Al-Amr. That the Muslim ruler, who is the ruler of that Muslim country, the people of uh, Takfir and the Khawarij, they want to see this allegiance, this bay'ah, to, يعني, they want to see it fall down. They don't want it to exist. They want to destroy it. Number two. Or sometimes they spread these doubts so that people do not obey the ruler. Number three. Sometimes they want to spread these doubts in order to make takfir of the ruler. And number four. And sometimes they want to spread these doubts so that they can uh, make khuruj on the ruler, meaning they can rebel against the Muslim ruler. The Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he says that what I did in this book is four things in regards to its compilation. Number one, Al-Ijaz, Mastata'atu ilayhi sabila. I shortened it as much as I could. I kept it very brief, as much as I could. Number two, I presented the shari evidences, the legislative evidences the, from the book of Allah, the son of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in counteracting these doubts. Number three, he also returned back to the usul of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah in regards to these doubts. How did Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah answer these doubts? What are the usul of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah in regards to these masail and issues that the khawarij and the people of takfir mention? Number four, وَالنَّقْلُ عَنْ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ فِي كُلِّ مَا أُقَرِّرُهُ And I mention the statements of the ulama, the people of knowledge, for everything that I say. And when the shaykh, he followed this tariqah, this methodology in writing, this book, even though it's small in size, about 70 pages, but it is strong in its refutation and it's very clear in its words against the people of Takfiran, the Khawarij. The Shaykh, 
Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he says that I was more specific in mentioning statements from the great Shaykhain, Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Abdullah ibn Abaz, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al Uthaymin, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Why? Because many of the Muslims accept the statements and the fatawa of these two scholars, especially from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And because these two sheikhs lived in a time wherein many of these doubts were spread and they were the ones who refuted them. Then the sheikh, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he goes on to mention uh, how this book and how uh, this issue of defending the rulers and so on and so forth, it is not because we love the rulers, meaning it is not because we want to write it so that we may gain money from them or fame or that we love them. Or as some people would say, Wallahu musta'an, that we are bootlickers to them. This is all kadib and it is a lie and fabrication upon Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. We do not bootlick the rulers. We do not love them and revere them because of who they are. But rather, we dispel these doubts and reply to these shubahat and so on and so forth and, repute, and refute the khawaj and the people of takfir only to defend the usul of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. Like the Shaykh he said, he said, "Who the defaw on usuli ahl sunnah wal jama'a, wa himaya to uqul al muslimina min al inhirafi an jadat al sawab." The only reason as to why we refute these doubts, not because I reiterate, not because we love the rulers for who they are, and so on and so forth, and their actions, but rather to defend the usul of ahl sunnah wal jama'a, and to protect the intelligence of the Muslimin from any distortion and tahrif and so on and so forth that is not yani, upon the truth. Anything that violates the truth, then we uh, will answer that and refute it. This is the reason as to why the Shaykh wrote this book, this work. And he mentions, that he refuted these doubts from two, from two angles, two aspects. The first one being يعني, من وجه عام, from a general perspective. That the Shaykh, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he refutes these doubts from a general perspective. And this general refutation, it is a refutation which serves as a refutation of all of the doubts altogether even though we don't mention them specifically. And the Shaykh, he said, وَوَجْهٍ خاص, We refute these doubts in a specific way. وَهُوَ رَدٌ مُفَصَّلْ عَلَى كُلِّ شُبْهَاتٍ And it is a, re a response to every single shubha that the people of Takfir and the Khawarij, they bring. So we are going to, inshallah, bithinillah, continue with the muqaddima, or uh, uh, after this muqaddima, with the general refutation. But the Shaykh, he says here, before I finish this uh, introduction, فإني أبعث رسالة لإخواني المسلمين على وجه العموم ولأخي المخالف على وجه الخصوص. The Sheikh Hafidh Allah Taala he says, before I conclude this introduction, I want to make this book, this book, this work, as a, I want to make it a رسالة, a message, a work, a treatise for all of my Muslim brothers generally. All of them generally. However, I also want to make this for my brother who opposes these usul of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah specifically. Before we carry on, notice how the Shaykh Hafidhullah Ta'ala he says, Wali Akhi al Mukhalif, my brother who opposes these usul. Yani, of course, there are people out there who adopt certain usul of the, uh, the, the people of Takfir and the Khawarij. But that doesn't stop Ahlul Sunnah from dealing with them with justice. And this is what the Shaykh, he says from his mannerisms and his character that we deal with them in such a way. My brother who is opposing these usul. But of course, if a person, he persists upon his batil and his falsehood, then that leaves no choice for Ahlul Sunnah except to make tabdi'ah upon that person. Of course, this is with the ulama and the senior students of knowledge. And that's a, that is a different issue that we will not mention today. So the Shaykh Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he says, I advise 
everyone who reads this work, first and foremost, taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. To have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To fear Allah Azza wa Jal. To keep piousness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do what Allah has commanded and leave what he has forbade. Because when we deal with such issues, we should do it based upon the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you want guidance for the people. Not that you want to يعني, mention these doubts and refute them because it's a game or it's fun or that you're bored or that you want people to think you're knowledgeable. We don't do this for entertainment. First and foremost comes the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to have to guide the people back to the sunnah. This is the objective of Ahl sunnah that we want the people to be guided. We want them to accept the haqq. We want them to return back to what Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have said upon the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih. We don't want to condemn them to the hellfire. And we don't want them to remain upon misguidance. But we want them to come back to the truth. So the Shaykh emphasizes taqwa Allah, having taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you read this book. Secondly, walazum al-dalil al-shari'i, stick to the evidences of the Sharia, stick to the evidences mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. All of the Quran and the Sunnah itself is an evidence. So stick to the evidence. Don't play with your emotions. Don't come from an emotional perspective. But rather stay upon the book and the Sunnah. Yani Luzum al Dalil al Sharari. Number three, Tark al Ta'asub lil Rumuz. Don't attach yourself to personalities or people or ideas, whatever the case is. Leave this ta'asub, this blind following, this attachment, this blind attachment that you have for the people. Just because there's a sheikh out there who says something, if it is wrong, then it is wrong. Don't attach your heart to him and his statement, but rather follow the dalil wherever it goes. For the haqq is a haqq in your taba. The truth is more worthy of being followed than any person. And lastly, وَقِرَاءَةُ هَذَا الْكِتَابِ that you read this book with an open mind, with clarity, with calmness and consideration. And that you don't read this book or يعني, you don't read it fully and you just skip a few parts. Read it with an open mind, with clarity, with thought. Read it with an open mind in that sense. And the Shaykh, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he says, Perhaps you might find something in this book that you did not know from before. It was hidden from you. That when you read these books, perhaps it might change your mind. Perhaps you will come across something that you've never come across before that will dispel your doubt and that it will make things easy and clear for you to understand. So when you do read it, have that in mind and know that to make tawbah, whoever makes tawbah, whoever repents from his evil beliefs, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that repentance and that tawbah. And there is no harm upon the one who makes a tawbah and rujuah to the usul of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah after realizing his mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, say, O oh my slaves, those of you who have oppressed themselves with sin, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving, the most merciful. Wa'alam anna ta'iba min adhambi kaman la dhambala. And know just like the hadith of the Messenger of Allah والسلام, states that the one who makes tawbah from a sin is like the one he didn't, who did not commit a sin at all. And the Shaykh, he ends his muqaddimah, his introduction by saying, Allahumma amin I ask Allah Azza wa Jal that people benefit from my book and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it for me heavy on the scales yawm al qiyamah and all praises due to Allah, Lord of all creation. Then the Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he begins the refutation of the people of Takfir and the Khawarij in a general sense. But before we move on to that general refutation, let us mention who the Khawarij are and who the people of Takfir are. 
are they one and the same or are they different or do they have things that they agree upon and so on and so forth the khawarij are a sect a deviant innovated sect whom the messenger of allah alayhi salatu salam prophesized the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said pointing to dhul khawaisira at tamimi he said yakhruj min dhiqi hada aw hada rajul qawm that a progeny, a people will come from the progeny of this man. And he pointed to Abdullah, or he pointed to the Khawaisir at Tamimi, and he said, from the loins, from the progeny of this man, will arise a qawm, a people, yakra'oon al-Qur'an. They will recite the Qur'an, and it will not go beyond their throats, meaning the true iman of it will not reach their hearts. Yamruquna min al-Dini, kama yamruqu al-Sahm min al-Ramiyya. They will leave this religion just like an arrow leaves its bow. The Prophet والسلام, he described them as Kilabun Nar. They are the dogs of the Hellfire. Why? Because these people they make takfir of the Muslimin unjustly. That you do not agree with them in what they say, in their taqreerat and their beliefs and so on and so forth, you are a disbeliever. If you commit a major sin, you are a disbeliever. If you judge by other than the Lord of Allah, you are a disbeliever. These were the people who manifested as a group in the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. They're the ones who fought Ali radiallahu anhu and Muawiyah in the battle of Nahrawan and other than that. In fact, Ali radiallahu anhu, when he was speaking about the Khawarij, he said in regards to them, يعني, that they are a people who, uh, they say, قُلْ إِنِ الْحُكْمُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ this is their chant, they shout, only the, the, the rule, the, the hukum, which is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali radiallahu anhu, he said about them, Kalimatul haqq, uridu biha batil. They say a statement of truth, but they intend by it falsehood. And the falsehood that they intend by it is takfir of the muslimin, takfir of the hukam, the rulers, and uh, takfir of anybody who does not agree with their usul and their manhaj and so on and so forth. This is the Khawarij, an old aged uh, sect, deviant sect that even exists until today in the form of Al Qaeda and ISIS and their likes. Wallahu Musta'an. Prophet ﷺ said that if he was alive, he would fight these people and kill them, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala killed Ad and Thamud. And many of the Salaf, in fact, the majority of all the Salaf, every all of the Salaf, Qatibatan, made tabdi' of the Khawarij. And they had ikhtilaf in regards to the takfir of the khawarij. Are they kuffar or not? There was a small ta'if, a small group from amongst the salaf who made takfir of them and said that they were kuffar. But this is not the majority opinion. The, the opinion. Ali radiallahu anhu was asked in regards to them, a kuffar on whom? Are they disbelievers? Ali radiallahu anhu replied, min al-kufri farbu. From kufr they ran away. Which shows that they are not kuffar, but rather they are deviant innovators. And what about the people of takfir? Are they the same? And it can be said that every khariji is a takfiri, but not every takfiri is a khariji. How so? Perhaps a person might have a wrong understanding in takfir in regards to the verb of takfir. So he makes takfir of something that's not, يعني, it's not mukaffir, it doesn't take him out of the fall of an Islam. So due to his ignorance, his jahl, he makes takfir based upon these things. Of course, such a person is taught that this is not the usul of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. And when you make takfir unjustly, this is not from our way. And if he persists, if he persists upon his misguidance, then of course he is known as a takfiri. And ultimately they are the khawarij in that sense. But a person who makes takfir unjustly, or he is wrong in his takfir, or he countlessly makes takfir based upon and some, his whims and desires and so on and so forth, such is known as a takfiri. We say this person is a takfiri. Yani, but does he mean he's a khariji? Uh, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Due to his ignorance and his jahl and so on and so forth. But in essence, the people of takfir and the khawarij, they are synonymous. They come hand in hand. Sometimes a person will make takfir, but he doesn't adopt the manhaj of the yaqeel of the khawarij. He's just mistaken. Or he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a jahil. But that does not stop him from being from the people of takfir. Wallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala a'lam. But la shak wa la ray, the point to be made is both of them are misguided. Both of them are deviants and both of them fall under the category of the people of bid'ah. 
So the Shaykh Hafidahullah Ta'ala, he mentions, Ar-Raddul Awwal ala jami'a shubahat This is the general refutation against all of the shubahat. And just to make a quick note, that yes, there are many shubahat. This book specifically deals with around 15 or 18 of those shubahat. And it might be hard for a person to remember the answers to all of these shubahat. However, the Shaykh, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he has placed for us a general rad, which refutes all of these shubahat. He has placed this general refutation, which generally refutes all of these shubahat. One does not need to go into detail in regards to every single one of them and so on and so forth. And this is the general rad that the Shaykh, Hafizahullah Ta'ala laid out. He says, وَذَلِكَ بِأَرْبَعَةِ أُصُولٍ قَرَّرَهَا أَهْلَ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ There are four principles that Ahl al-Sunnah wal jamaah have established in refutation of these shubahat. هناك أصول ينطلق منها أهل السنة والجماعة في التعامل مع الحكام وهذه الأصول الأصيلة يمكن اعتبارها ردا إجماليا على جميع الشبهات المثار The Shaykh he says that there are certain أصول that Ahl al-Sunnah wal jamaah have laid down in regards to your ta'amal, your interaction with the ruler or your dealings with the ruler and these usul, they are usul which you can use in refutation of these doubts as a general refutation. فَمَنْ ضَبِطَ هَذِهِ الْأُصُولِ وَالْتَزَمَهَا فَقَدْ اتَّضَحَ لَهُ الْحَقِّ وَزَالَتْ عَنُهُ الْكَثِيرِ مِنَ الشُّبَهَاتِ So whoever is precise in these usul, he learns these usul, these four usul that we're going to talk about, whoever learns them, knows them, and has diqqa and precision within them, then it will make clear to him the truth and a lot of shubahat will be removed from this person. Because many a time, the people, they come with shubahat, they come with doubts. They come with doubts, and you might not know the answer to these doubts. However, you have certain usul that Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah themselves have placed down, that you say to yourself, wait a second, this doubt, I might not know the answer to it, but Ahl al-Sunnah, they say regarding this, this, yani there's this asal, this principle that they go by, and by that principle, which is established, the doubt is removed. So the Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he says, Al-Aslul Awwal, the first principle, or the first yani, principle of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. He says, Al-Muslimu ma'murun bit-tathabbuti fi ma yablughuhu min al-akhbar. That a Muslim, he is ordered by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to verify anything and everything that comes to him with regards to any piece of information or news. If laysat kullu da'awa allati tuthāru or tuthāru ala al-hukkām al-muslimīna sahiha Because not every single claim or piece of information that comes in regards to the rulers is true. فَيَجِبُ أَتَّأَكُّدُ مِنْ سِحَّةِ الْخَبْرِ So a person has to verify and be sure of this news. Is it true or not? وَلِذَلِكَ فَإِنَّهُ يُقَالْ إِنَّ الْكَثِيرَ مِنَ الشُّبَهِ مَا هِيَ إِلَّا دَعَاوَى مُجَرَّدَ مِنَ الْبَرَاهِينَ And from this angle, a person can say that much or many of the doubts that the people of Takfir and the Khawarij bring is based upon claims without any clear-cut evidence. This is the first asl, this is the first principle. Verify, clarify, make sure the news that you are bringing is true. Make sure it's something which is official and not something off the internet from some link that you found five, six pages down after a Google search. Make sure that what you are talking about is haq and true and not a lie against the rulers. In fact, whoever it may be, because this, uh, the, the, the leader the Shaykh is going to bring, it's not specific in regards to the rulers. This is any and every Muslim, anybody, whether he's a Muslim, uh, yani, uh, whether he's deviant or not deviant, whether he's a, a ruler or not a ruler, he's a slave, he's a peasant, any news that comes to you regarding anything, verify it. At-tathabbut. Yani, and, and if that's anything, then in the case of the rulers, it's much more so. Because now we're talking on a state, yani on, on, on a state level. This is to do with those who are running a country, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, predestined that they rule the, the, the country. Yani, verifying news in regards to them is more so than anybody else. But this rule of verifying and clarifying goes for anybody and everybody. The Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he says, these are, the, these are the evidences for what I say. 
قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبينوا أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hujarat, verse number six, that if a fasiq comes to you, if a rebellious sinner comes to you with news, then verify it. Verify it, lest you harm a people due to ignorance, and then later on, you become regretful over what you did. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly is telling us, whenever news comes to us from a fasiq, from a person, from a rebellious senior, whoever comes to you with this news, فَتَثَبَّتُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَتَبَيَّنُوا فَتَبَيَّنُوا Clarify and verify, verify. In another qira'ah of the Qur'an, فَتَثَبَّتُوا And I believe this was the qira'ah of Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Verify, clarify this news that comes to you. Why? أَن تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَ Because if you don't, you are going to afflict a people due to your ignorance. You're going to cause harm. فَتُصْبِحُ عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ And then by way of that, you are going to be regretful later on what you did. The Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he brings a statement of Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And he says, قال Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah يسمع خبر الفاسق ويتبين ويتثبت فَلَا يَجْزَمُوا بِصَدْقِهِ وَلَا كَذِبِهِ إِلَّا بِبَيِّنَةٍ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَىٰ Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that you listen to the news of this rebellious sin, of this fasiq, وَيَتَبَيِّنْ وَيَتَبَّتْ He clarifies and he verifies. He asks, where did you get this from? Is it true? Is it official? You ask others. I heard such such news. Is it true? You go to the source of the news. You go to the source of the person who said this and so on and so forth. فَلَا يَجْزِمُ بِصِدْقِهِ وَلَا كَذِبِهِ إِلَّا بِبَيِّنَةٍ So whatever news comes to you, you should not say this is haqq or this is batil. You should not say that this is true or this is a lie. Up until you have clarified. إِلَّا بِبَيِّنَةٍ Up until you have clarity in regards to that news. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in that ayah that we just recited, if a verse comes to you uh, with any news, then clarify or verify. This was mentioned in Fatawa, uh, Majmu' al-Fatawa by Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah in the 19th volume, 63. Likewise, Shaykh al-Islam, the Shaykh Hafizullah mentioned his book, وَقَالَ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَأَيْضًا فَإِنَّهُ عَلَّ لَذَلِكَ بِخَوْفِ النَّدَمُ وَالنَّدَمُ إِنَّمَا يَحْصُلُ عَلَى عُقُوبَةِ الْبَرِيءِ مِنَ الدَّمُ The Shaykh, <coughs> Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah Rahimahu Allah Ta'ala, he said, <coughs> he said also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained that, meaning that rule of verification, by scaring the person with regretfulness. And of course, regretfulness only, you'll, be, you'll only feel regret if the punishment that has come about due to this information, this news, falls on somebody who is free from sin. Let's just pause here and we will carry on the Shaykh's kalam later. Imagine you come with news or someone comes to you with news and you have not verified it. And because of that false information, that fake news or whatever the case is, somebody gets harmed or some harm befalls a people. You have indirectly, because of you spreading this false news, have indirectly harmed a people or even directly because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتُصْبِحُوا You people will become regretful over what you did. Because if somebody innocent gets hurt over the false information that you portrayed or you gave, then this is of course something, uh, a cause of regretfulness. So Shaykh al-Islam and Taymiyyah rahimahullah here is saying that regretfulness here only comes about because a person who is yani, free from sin has been punished due to this false news. Kama fi sunan Abu Dawood, just like it's mentioned in the sunan of Abu Dawood, in this hadith, where the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he said, Udra'u al-hududa bi shubahat fa inna al-imama an yukhti'a fi al-afwi where the hadith mentions, remove the punishments, yani the, the, the capital punishments, if a person falls into a sin, remove these capital punishments with shubuhat. Yani what, what this hadith means is to exert your efforts in finding an excuse to uplift these uh, capital punishments for those who fall into such sins. For verily, for the imam to make a mistake when pardoning somebody, 
is better for him to make a mistake than in punishing, punishing somebody unjustly. So this hadith is telling us that if somebody falls into a sin and it requires capital punishment, try your best to find an excuse, try your best to find shubuhat, doubts in regards to the actions so that he can be free, yeah, and so that you can not implement uh, the had against him. Why? Because it's better for the imam, it's better for the ruler, or better for the person to be mistaken in pardoning someone in, as, as opposed to punishing somebody and being wrong. فَإِذَا دَارَ الْأَمْرُ بَيْنَ أَنْ يُخْطِئَ فَيُعَاقَبْ بَرِيئًا أَوْ يُخْطِئَ فَيَعْفُوا عَنْ مُذْنِبٍ كَانَ هَذَا أَخْطَأْ خَيْرٌ مِنَ الْخَطَعِينَ So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahu Allah ta'ala, he mentioned that if a person, if, if the affair revolves around a person making a mistake because he uh, punished somebody who was innocent and he let off somebody who, uh, of course, committed a crime, no doubt letting a person off even though it was wrong to do so is better than punishing somebody who is innocent. This is mentioned in Majmu al-Fatawa, the 15th volume, 308. The Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala in his book, he quotes a Sa'di, Imam Sa'di, Qala al-Sa'di, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, wa hadha aydan min al-adab al-lati ala ulil uh, al-babi at-ta'addu biha wa isti'manuha wa huwa annahu idha akhbarahum فَاسِقٌ بِخَبْرٍ أَنْ يَتَثَبَّتُوا فِي خَبْرِهِ فَلَا يَأْخُذُهُ مُجَرَّدًا The Shaykh Hafidhullah, Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'di, al-Hanbali, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, وَهَذَا أَيْضًا uh, This is also from the adab, this is from the mannerisms upon those people who have insight and intelligence that they adopt this mannerism and that they use it. وَهُوَ أَنَّهُ إِذَا أَخْبَرَهُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِخَبْرٍ أَنْ يَتَثَبَّتُوا And that is, that if a person comes to you, a fasik, somebody who is in a sinner or somebody who is a rebellious sinner, comes to you with any news that you verify. This is what the people who are people of intellect and wisdom, they do. They verify this khabar. And they don't just take it like that. They don't take it at face value. فَإِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ خَطْرًا كَبِيرًا وَوَقُوعًا فِي الْإِثْمِ Because within that, just taking everything you hear uh, and you believe it's true, within that there is a great danger and a person is prone to falling into sin. فَفِيهِ دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ خَبْرَ الصَّادِقِ مَقْبُولٌ وَخَبْرُ الْكَاذِبِ مَرْدُودٌ And within this, there is evidence that the statement of a person who is sadiq, who is trustworthy, it is مَقْبُولٌ, it is accepted. And the khabr, the information, or the news of a person who is a kadib, who is a liar, he is مَرْدُودٌ, he is uh, refuted, he is re rejected. وَخَبْرُ الْفَاسِقِ and as for the khabar, the, 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 the news of a fasiq, a person who is a rebellious, sinia, uh, rebellious, uh, rebellious sinner, then in regards to his khabar, his news that he brings, he is mutawaqqifun fi. We, we, we don't say it is true, we don't say it is a lie. This was mentioned in tafsir of Sa'di, uh, rahimahullah, in regards to this ayah. Now, we want to clarify something. We have been saying for the past nearly 20 minutes or 25 minutes, or not 20 minutes, about 10, about 10 minutes on this point, this verse also, if a fasiq comes, a fasiq comes. Yani, the Shaykh uh, Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned here that the information of a person who is sadiq, who is trustworthy and truthful, is accepted. And the khabar of somebody who is a liar, okay, is rejected. But the khabar of a person who is a fasiq, then we stop. We don't say it's true. We don't say it's a lie up until we clarify. This teaches us something. And this is what the Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala is going to go through now. The Shaykh Al-Bandar al hutaybi Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he mentions this fa'ida, this uh, um, a tremendous benefit and something that uh, should be written down and, and memorized and used. The Shaykh, he says, Al-Ayatu waradat fi khabr al-fasiq. This verse that we have quoted as an evidence, it's referring to the fasiq, somebody who is a rebellious sinner, somebody who is known for open sin. وَمِثْلُهُ خَبْرُ الْمَجْهُولِ And likewise, the person, okay, he doesn't have to be a fasiq, likewise a person who is unknown. The, 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 the speech of somebody, the information, the news of somebody who is unknown, majhul. And we're going to mention this in two ways. So the Shaykh, what he's trying to say 
is that look at the if a, if a, if a fasik comes to you with news and information you have to verify likewise the one who is majhul you don't know whether he's a fasik you don't know whether he's truthful and you don't know whether he's a liar because a person might say wait a second you can't use this verse against me am i a fasik this verse is only for people who are fasik and this is incorrect this is incorrect this verse is not specific just for for those who are open sinners no many people they get the wrong end of the stick when it comes to such an issue because when you say to them where do you get this information from they might argue with you and you say to them but Ahi, brother or sister allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me to verify what's the evidence allah says in the quran if a fasiq comes to you with evidence and the person turns around and says astaghfirullah am i a fasiq you calling me a rebellious sinner? you calling me a fasiq astaghfirullah and this is obviously the reply of the one who is ignorant and doesn't know regarding the qawaid or the usul uh, of usul al-fiqh or whatever the case is yani these islamic sciences which make clear to us what this ayah actually means person who doesn't have knowledge will make such an accusation are you calling me a fasiq <laughs> this is only about fustaq no that's not the case the shaykh ta'ala he says this is also wa mithluhu khabr al-majhul somebody who is unknown to us we don't know him to be truthful trustworthy and truthful we don't know him to be a liar and we don't know him to be a fasiq. He's majhul. He's unknown. I don't know. So a random person comes to you. He pops you on a WhatsApp group chat and he, and, and, and he posts some news or he posts some information or whatever, whatever the case is. Well, you don't know if he's sadiq, so you can't accept it. You don't know if, he, if he's a kadib, so you can't reject it. And you don't even know if he's a fasiq or not. So you can't be mutawakkif. But you can be mutawakkif still. Why? Because he's majhul. He is unknown to us. Therefore, the one who is unknown takes the ruling of the one who is a fasiq in terms of making tathabbut of his khabr. This is the intent of this verse. The Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, number one, Al-Majhulu yahtamilu an yakuna fasiqan. He says that the person who is majhul, the reason as to why we say they take the same ruling in regards to the verification of any news and information, because number one, this person who is unknown it may be that he is a fasiq. We don't know. And that's the bottom line. We don't know. He might be a fasiq. He might, he might not be. There's ihtimal, there's a possibility that this person is a fasiq. So therefore, to be on the safe side, we, we stop in regards to accepting or rejecting his, his, his information or his news. If he's majhul. Just like we stop in regards to the information and news of a person who is a fasiq, who is a sinner, we stop and we, until we verify. Likewise, the person who is majhul, he's unknown to us, we don't know whether he's truthful or he's a liar or he's a fasiq, we stop. We want to verify just like we do with the fasiq. Not because this person is a fasiq, but it's a possibility he might be. We don't know. That's the bottom line. Number two. The Shaykh Hafidullah Ta'ala, he says, Anna Allaha Jalla wa Ala Allala lil Amri bitta tabbati bi illa wa hiya Alla nusiba bi jahalatin. Wal isaba tu bil jahalati muhtamila tun fi habri al majhul kama hiya muhtamila tun fi habri al fasiq. The Shaykh he mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a reason as to why we should make tawaqqaf, we should stop in regards to the news or the khabar of a fasiq and verify. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us that illa, that considering factor. And that is what? That we do not harm a people due to ignorance. That's the whole point here of the ayah. And harming a people due to ignorance can come from somebody who is unknown as well. It doesn't have to come from somebody who is a fasiq. It can come from somebody who is unknown whether he is truthful or he is a liar or he is a fasik. That outcome, that illa can come from him too. So this is the considering factor, that we don't harm anybody due to the statements we say, yani if they're false or not, and so on and so forth. So there's a possibility that this person can be a fasik. And secondly, that they share the fasik and the one who is majhul, they share in that illa, they share in that considering factor that they might harm a people due to their uh, false information. And then, of course, afterwards, they be regretful over what they did. So the Sheikh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, if there's a possibility that an unknown uh, person can harm a person just like the Fasik, then, of course, the same ruling applies.
And then the Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, وَأَقُولُ I say, وَهَذَانَ الْوَجْهَانَ يُثْبِتَانْ بِجَلَى خَطَأْ مَنْ قَصَرَ الْآيَةَ عَلَى مَنْ تَبَيَّنَ فِسْقَهُ The Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, from this we understand, from these two uh, the angles, that the one who said this verse only speaks about uh, people who are fusaq, or, or only the people who are uh, major sinners or open sinners or of the cases, then this is wrong. This is wrong. فَقَالَ بِقَبُوا الْخَبْرِ كُلُّ مَنْ لَمْ يَثْبُتْ فِسْقُهُمْ كَالْمَجْهُولِ So of course upon us is to verify the information uh, from whoever it comes, whether this person is a fasiq or not because of what we have mentioned previously. Uh, so this was the first asal, the first principle that the Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala mentioned in refutation to uh, the people of Takfir and the Khawarij uh, that we uh, verify and we reiterate, reiterate that principle that we verify every single news that comes to us, whether it's regarding a ruler or not. Because when, once you have verified if something is true or not, if it's true, then of course there are certain steps we take afterwards, which we'll, dis we'll discuss later on. And if it is false, then the doubt is refuted from its origin and its roots. It has and it bears no weight whatsoever. ta'ala, we are going to continue on next week, inshallah, with the second principle and the third principle, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, with the respective evidences Insha'Allah, the same time next week at 9 o'clock. Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.